Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to start building our first application to talk to OpenAI chat models. Before doing that, first we need to create an account on our OpenAI platform and create an API key and set it as an environment variable. So in order to do that, first we should go to platform.openai.com and register. Uh, you can use uh, social login. And once you log in, you can see API keys in the organization level or at the project level. So come here and create a new secret key. So I have created my secret key. Now I can take this value and set it as an environment variable so that we can reference these environment variable values instead of hard coding the uh, sensitive information in our application. Yep. One thing to remember, in order to use this OpenAI API key, either you should have a subscription to the OpenAI or you can add some credits. I think minimum you should uh, use $5 and then you can get some credits. So otherwise, it's not going to allow you to use this API key and make calls to LLMs. So once we have this, we can go ahead and create a Spring Boot application and see how we can interact with the OpenAI LLMs. Here, first I have created a, a plain Maven project. And if you notice, we have packaging type POM, which means uh, this is a root Maven module, which may not contain any code itself, but we are going to create uh, sub modules and each module we can demonstrate various Spring AI capabilities. So this is a basic setup we have. And now we can go ahead, if uh, you are using IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition, we can directly create a module and select Spring Boot. And you can go ahead and select what are the status you need and create a uh, module here. If not, you can go to uh, Spring Initializer, start at spring.io. And here select Java language, Maven build tool. Of course, you can use Gradle if you like and uh, provide this project metadata. I'm going to use uh, Java 24, but anything uh, from Java 17 onwards works fine. And here as uh, starters, I have selected web and validation. Uh, these are typical for REST APIs and for bean validations. Now we are going to talk to OpenAI, right? So let's check for OpenAI. And there are Azure OpenAI and just OpenAI. So I'm going to select OpenAI and we can generate the application and unzip it and copy that into our parent project. I have copied uh, the generated project into a root package, a root module here. And I'm going to add that as a module and refresh. So now it is one of the module here. We have, uh, let me clean it up a little bit. So apart from OpenAI dependency, uh, REST, it is typical Spring Boot application and there is a, a Spring AI bill of material dependency added, that's it. So now we are going to configure OpenAI properties so that it knows to which uh, model it needs to talk to and all that. And also we need to pass OpenAI API key. Now let's configure the OpenAI configuration properties. So here you can notice we have configured the base URL, API key and chart options model uh, and temperature. So uh, if we are talking to OpenAI, this is the default base URL. We don't even need to uh, explicitly configure that, but this is the important uh, API key configuration. We have already configured a environment variable with this name by setting the value to uh, actual API key. And this is how we can uh, specify what chart model we want to use. So uh, if you want to use older models like GPT-40 or Mini or something like that, you can specify it. But I'm going to use the latest GPT-5 model. And one important property is temperature, which is uh, whose value should be between 0 to 1. So usually the higher the number, the response would be more creative and random and the lesser the number it is going to be more deterministic and an interesting thing to notice is if you are using older models like uh, gpt4 or something like that you can configure a different value but gpt5 uh, seems to be supporting only temperature value one so we have configured that and next let's create a chart controller so here i am creating a chart controller which is nothing but a rest controller and here in the constructor I am trying to inject this chart client builder 
which is going to be auto configured by Spring AI. And inside the constructor, I'm simply calling the build uh, by using all the defaults and I'm instantiating the chat client instance. So if you want to provide any other customizations, you can do that. You can uh, specify what is the default uh, system prompt. And if you want to specify any advisors that we're going to talk later. So all that customizations you can do here and the chat client can be used to make a call to LMs. So here is one interesting thing. Let's say you have multiple such controllers and you want to initialize chat client with different customized uh, configuration you, you should be doing like this. Otherwise, you can create a configuration class and try to uh, provide a Beam instance by taking the builder and then uh, doing all the customizations and then exposing that as a Beam. And you should be able to directly inject that chat client instance itself. But uh, for now, let's go ahead with this approach itself. And here we have a uh, post API endpoint and we have a input record, output record. For the input, we are simply taking the user prompt, which should not be null. Uh, should not be blank. And once we have the user prompt, we are uh, calling chart line dot prompt and pass the what of the user entered prompt. And here we are making the call. And once we got the response, we are calling this content method, which is going to return the uh, LLM response as a string. Uh, in addition to this, there are different ways to make the API call here, but this is the simplest way to make a call to LLM. So once we got the response, we are simply returning the response as output of content. So it is a simplest implementation we have. Now let's uh, start the application. And the application is started. Now uh, you can use any uh, client like Postman or anything like that. But here in IntelliJ, I have a HTTP console itself client. I can make the call to the API chart endpoint. And here I'm specifying the prompt as what is Spring Boot. Uh, let's see what LLM is going to respond with. So here you can see uh, Spring Boot is an opinionated framework built on top of Spring ecosystem. Uh, so we got the response from uh, OpenAI LLM. So we have built a simplest uh, chart application. I would say it's kind of a hello world of AI uh, based applications. Uh, an interesting thing is, uh, Spring AI is internally taking care of making uh, REST API calls to the LLM models and all that. But if you want to know what is going on behind the scenes, uh, what kind of inputs uh, our application is sending to uh, LLMs and what kind of a response we are getting, a simple option is to inject an advisor to this chart client so that it's going to log what is the input we are sending and what is the response we have got from LLM. And if you know from the Spring framework itself, Advisor is kind of a technology from AOP, which is going to intercept a uh, request and add the custom logic. And once we got the response, we can add some more logic. So uh, out of the box, Spring AI provides this you know, uh, simple logging advisor, which is going to log the input uh, request and responses. So once we set this, we also need to enable a uh, log level for uh, this. So here, uh, ORG Spring Framework AI Chart Client Advisor, uh, set it to debug. Okay, now with this configuration, let's start and again make the API to the same API endpoint. This time we can see, so our uh, logging advisor log this chart client request, which contains, so what is the prompt message? The user message is what is Spring Boot and uh, it also specifies other properties like uh, uh, what is the model we are using and uh, what is the temperature we set. So all the inputs that we are using for making a call to, uh, it is logged. And also once we got the response, we simply extracted the actual text response. But in addition to that, it also returns a lot of other data, like uh, what, what is the model uh, used and uh, how many tokens are used and all that. So uh, if you want to check what what is going on behind the scenes? This is the uh, simplest option that uh, to enable this uh, advisor, and you will be able to see a lot of uh, data that is going on behind the scenes. So basically, this is the response we just extracted. But in addition to that, there is a lot more things going on. So I would say this is enough for this uh, episode that we get to know how to make a call to OpenAI by specifying the properties like this, and we are able to chart with OpenAI. In the next episode, 
let us see instead of talking to OpenAI itself, there are other OpenAI compatible uh, LNMs like Grok, uh, even Gemini. Uh, there is uh, they uh, gave OpenAI compatible APIs. So there are a lot of options that are compatible with OpenAI, and we're going to see some of them how to talk to those uh, LNMs.